On this season of Destination Earth, Akane and I take to Canada's smallest province of Prince Edward Island. PEI is known for many things, including sandy beaches, red cliffs, and being a land full of potatoes. As we explore this amazing province, we'll show you everything from the main city of Charlottetown to the stunning landscapes of Prince Edward Island National Park. Where are we off to today? Let's find out. Well, today is day number two here in Prince Edward Island, and today we're going to be exploring the city of Charlottetown. It's a place that neither Akane and I have ever been to, so we're excited to see what it offers and how it compares to some of the other cities we visited. Charlottetown is a small city with a population of about 40,000 people. Although small, the city plays an important part in Canadian history, as was the location where the idea of Canada first began. In 1864, a group of government officials came across the maritime provinces and met to talk about proposed maritime union, but instead led to the formation of Canada a few years later in 1867. We decided to approach the city from the west and headed east. Before going, one of the things I like to do is look to see if there's any free parking. And we did find something on the west side of the city in a place called Victoria Park. Today we're going to be starting in Victoria Park. fortification around the Charlottetown Harbor dates back to the arrival of the French in 1720 across the harbor in the port La Jolie. The French built the first battery here in and around 1720 when they first arrived in the area to protect the first settlements. When the British arrived in 1758, they outnumbered and outpowered the French and destroyed the battery. The current battery was built by the British in 1777, using mounted guns taken from Fort Amherst across the shore after it was abandoned. The area was eventually replaced by George's Battery and Barracks in 1793, and remained the British military headquarters until the removal of the garrison and guns during the Crimean War in 1853. The battery's position allows you to look out over the harbor, the city, and along the shores for this beautiful stretch of land. Well, the boardwalk that runs along the very bottom of Victoria Park has been absolutely amazing. Not only is it a great way to see Charlottetown, you also get spectacular views of the ocean. Considering this is our first time in Charlottetown, we were interested in getting a little bit of help getting around. So we went onto the Charlottetown website and actually found a walking tour. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And as you can see on the sidewalks, there's actually these lines and those help you follow this guided tour. So right now we're beginning on West Street. Heading east towards the city, we were excited to reach our first stop, Beaconsfield House. Built in 1877 for James and Edith Peake, Beaconsfield was one of Prince Edward Island's most elegant homes. Featuring the finest in materials and craftsmanship, it was also equipped with the latest conveniences of the day. The Peakes, unfortunately, were destined to enjoy Beaconsfield for only a short time, a time filled with triumphs and tragedies. Henry Cundall, the second owner, moved in the house into 1883 with his sisters Penelope and Millicent. After his death in 1916, the house was used as a ladies' residence. 
Later, the Kundal home became a residence for nursing students. Today, Beaconsfield Historic House stands as an enduring symbol of Victorian elegance. Continuing the tour, we turned on to Richmond Street, which took us into the heart of town. The route we are following now shows historic part in the town. So one thing we love here on the East Coast are our outdoor markets. You can find everything from fresh fish and produce and crafts people have made. Now we came across one of these in PEI and in Charlottetown and we couldn't help but check it out. Continuing our tour, we turned down Victoria Row, a lovely pedestrian-only street. Lined with bars and restaurants, you could tell this place would have been a hotspot pre-COVID times. The streets are lined to one side with beautiful old brick buildings, the kind that have seen the impact of vigilant owners who take the time to make sure they look nice and preserve their original charm. Along this string of home and businesses, existed Queen Square School, a boys only public school which ran from 1878 to 1662. The stunning architecture of St. Dunstan's Basilica dominates the skyline. The 18 bells found at the top were installed in the North Steeple in 1928 and for almost 50 years rang out every day. During the 1970s however, the bells were silent as the building underwent construction for a failing structure, but will return to operation once again in 2017. Across the street are a series of old homes that make up a block known as the Great George Hotel, which offers some of the most history-rich properties in the city. All the buildings, in one form or another, were here before 1864. In addition to being a home or home businesses, they have a very, very long history in the hotel business. The building itself, at least part of it, on the north corner, was built before 1812 and was called the Wellington Hotel. For years, it was a center of such social activity in the town. The south corner, now the main entrance of the hotel, was known as the Pavilion Hotel in 1864. The delegates from Nova Scotia stayed here, and its history in the hotel business has been continuous since 1853. So far we've been walking around the city for about an hour, and honestly, it's been fantastic. So there's no real big buildings here. You got the kind of that small town feel, but you have lots of stuff that the cities typically have. So there's lots of history here, and all the little shops are so colorful and bright. Right now, we've made it down to the waterfront, and I'm so excited to see what it offers. As we walk downtown, we learned about the history associated with the seaside location. Island ships were traditionally built to export agricultural goods and lumber. By the early 1800s, islanders learned they could make more money selling ships than moving barrels of fish and produce across the Atlantic. Shipyards soon scattered every bay, harbor, and creek along the shore. Both city and town thrived as skilled hands from across the island came together to craft some of the world's finest vessels. While a few men made fortunes, dozens more prospered. Blacksmiths, chandlers, sailmakers, and carpenters were all needed to construct a sound vessel, and they too were able to take advantage of the shipmaking business. Unfortunately, the industry, and with it all its wealth, ran aground. 
The advent of steam and steel brought the golden age of shipbuilding to an end by 1880. So today is July 18th, and something I just learned this morning, it's National Ice Cream Day. So we're gonna celebrate by going to PEI's own famous creamery, Cow's Ice Cream. Cow's Ice Cream is a PEI staple. We'll be diving into the food of Prince Edward Island further in another video. But we had time to stop and get our fill of this delicious maritime made treat. As we sat, we enjoyed the familiar sound of local music being played right in town. As we finished off our exploration, we wanted to share a song that is written specifically for BEI and its people. Come all you folk and sing this song, Prince Edward Island. From the Elephant Rock to the Diligent Pond, Prince Edward Island. Here's to the hearts who call their home, inspiration for Milton's poems. Tonight we'll sing, tonight we'll shout, Prince Edward Island. Is good on the fisherman's bank, Prince Edward Island. We haul the traps with a heave and a yank, Prince Edward Island. A feed of lobster in a boiling pot, dipped in butter will hit the spot. Tonight we'll sing, tonight we'll shout, Prince Edward Island. When winter ends, it's a month of rain, Prince Edward Island. But then it gets too hot and we all complain, Prince Edward Island. Sparkling waters, fields of green, Godspeed the bow behind the team. Tonight we'll sing, tonight we'll shout, Prince Edward Island. Well, this is where we like to live, in Prince Edward Island. From Guernsey Cove to the North River Bridge, Prince Edward Island. Warm the sand on a salty day, here's the rusty roads to play. Tonight we'll sing, tonight we'll shout, Prince Edward Island. Come on, you folk, sing this song, Prince Edward Island. From the elephant rock to the diligent ponds, Prince Edward Island. Have a great view, St. John, we remember in our song. Tonight we'll sing, tonight we'll shout, Prince Edward Island. Have a great view, St. John, we salute her with our song. Tonight we'll sing, tonight we'll shout, Prince Edward Island. We've spent about six hours here in Charlottetown, and as you can tell, we got a lot of sun today. Uh, that said, we've had a fantastic time. This is a great little town with lots to do. So if you're ever in Charlottetown, uh, you're gonna enjoy yourself. Let us know in the comments if we missed anything that we should have seen while we're here, and hopefully next time, we'll be able to check that out. <laughs>